Hi, this is Dan Heisman, Philly Tutor for Chess FM. This is the Improve Your Chess video series for ICC members. In today's game, we're going to look at an over the board game that was played at a slow time control. There's basically two themes to this game. One is what happens when you play an opening and you really don't understand the ideas of the opening. In this case, it's going to be black with the King's Indian. And the other theme of this game is going to be the relative importance of positional play and strategy versus tactics. All right, so let's get to our game. White opens up d4, as you might expect, since I said it was a King's Indian. Black plays knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, and here d5 is Grunfeld, bishop g7, King's Indian. So bishop g7, allowing e4, d6 main line. And now the most common move played by grandmasters is bishop e2, especially if they're going to go into the classical line. But there's nothing terribly wrong with playing knight f3. It does allow some sidelines, but not too many people play those. Uh, most amateurs are not aware of the subtle differences, and nobody really taught them the move order, so they generally tend to play knight f3 first. And again, nothing wrong with that. Black castles. And white transposes back into the main line with bishop e2. And even though it looks like it's unsafe, it really is safe. It's, it's a good time to plug my book, Is Your Move Safe? And of course, e5 is a famous safe move that just doesn't look safe on the surface here. And black knew that, and he plays e5. And now the main line for white is castles, and he does. And here, black should play, or I shouldn't say should play, but the main line is knight to c6. And after d5, knight e7, that leads to the famous tabiab, the mainline king's Indian. However, black was not familiar with that, and he was kind of out of his book here. So he played the anti-thematic rook e8. And what I told him after the game, when we went over the game, was there are lines where you can play rook e8 here, but you have to make sure the e-file gets semi-open first. So if you want to play rook e8, you would play pawn takes, knight takes, and I believe the computer here likes knight c6 as the number one move. But if you put your rook on e8 here in this line, uh, which is a fairly rare line, it, it, notice we've got sort of a, you know, Meroxy bind looking thing, except in Meroxy bind, the black pawn would be on e7, not c7. Um, but in this kind of position, putting the rook on e8 would make some sense. But when you put your rook on e8, when white has the opportunity to close the center, then your rook is going to be biting on granite, and also your main break move in the King's Indian f5 is not going to be supported by the rook. So rook e8 just looks like a move played by, uh, you know, a lower-rated player that would do that, or an extremely high-rated player who knows what he's doing, and he's trying to entice white to playing d5 in case white didn't want to do that. All right, so white plays d5, which is logical because with the rook on e8, uh, that's now misplaced. So black should still play for this f5 break. You know, the, the pointing rule says if the e pawns and the d pawns are all locked up against each other and none of the four can move, and here they are, you should put your hand across the e and d pawns, and that should point to the side you're going to attack and the side you're going to break. So here, white's e and d pawns point to the left, black's e and d pawns point to the king's side. Um, I've seen a lot of people try to apply this rule to pawn structures that are not locked with E and D, like pawn structures locked on C and D or even B or C or something, and it just doesn't work. You know, if the pawns would be pointing on the side of the board, they'd be pointing right on the, off the edge of the board, and that wouldn't make any sense. So the further away from the center, the less sense it makes, but it really only makes sense, the pointing rule, when you're talking about the E and the D pawns. So here, white should break with c5, and black should break with f5. All right, so black plays knight bd7. And now white, if he's anticipating that black is going to play knight c5, he could play a move that guards the e-pawn.